Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katrina and this is So today I want to talk about a few books that I wish that I could read again for the first time. Now, obviously most of these are going to be kind of like thrillers because you already know what's going to happen at the end. Uh, so reading them again kind of defeats the purpose. You don't get the same rush. And speaking of rush, No Exit by Taylor Adams. I thought I was going to have a panic attack while reading this book. It's about this young lady who's on her way. She's driving through the Rocky Mountains on her way to try to see her mother before she dies. And she gets caught in a snowstorm in the mountains and she has to stop at a rest stop. And there's like four or five other strangers that are stopped there as well. And so she goes in and kind of, you know, nods at everybody. Everybody's kind of sitting around. And she forgets something in her car and has to go out there. And she sees in one of the cars that there is a little girl in a cage. And so then she has to go back into the store, into the rest stop, and with this knowledge, and try to figure out what the hell, you know, from then on out. And I'm telling you, it was fast paced. My heart was pounding. I was so nervous. I was shocked at times. And Taylor Adams' next book, I already have it, um, called, it's called Hair, Hairpin Bridge, and I can't wait to read it. I hope that it is as heart pounding and as, as this was. This book was so awesome. And like again, if I read it again, I already know what's going to happen. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if that's a good experiment to do. Like, do I, would I still get a rush? Maybe a lesser rush, but would I still just from the writing get a rush? I don't know. But going into this, not knowing the twists and turns and the ending is just mwah, chef's kiss. The next book I wish I could read for the first time is 14 by Peter Kleins. I have reread this book because I enjoy the characters, but I think just it's special to discover everything along with this group of characters. The book is about this group of people who move into this apartment complex and it's too good to be true. It's in a great part of town, it's a beautiful apartment, and it's really inexpensive. And obviously, when something's too good to be true, so th there's this one door that um, is locked, and they all get kind of curious about it, and then they all discover what's going on behind this door and have to figure out things from there. And it now I like I said I this is a little different than typical like thrillers or horrors. I would say this is it's a Lovecraftian uh, story, um, but I would say that because the characters are so unique and individual and differentiated, they're not you know some people write and it's like none of the characters are you can't tell the difference between the characters. They're funny. Their interactions are funny. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. And Peter Klein has gone on to write. It, more books kind of in this universe and so there's little uh, Easter eggs sprinkled in other books even though the books are very different but they still tangentially are in the same universe so it, that's really cool but I wish I could read it for the first time again because I will be discovering I think I said this already I will be discovering things along with this group of people like like they're my friends like I live there with them and we'd be discovering this stuff together so yeah I wish I could read that book again for the first time the next book that I would like to read for the first time again would be Gone Girl. That book was, it changed kind of the trajectory of what women's fiction and I would say uh, thrillers, women's thrillers or just thrillers period would be. I, you know, most of the time before that, all of the thrillers were kind of a male police officer or maybe even a female police officer like Patricia Cornwell's books um, or a coroner or something like that so you know they there was a there's a murder and they have to find the murder there's no you know there's no twist really and then you know they had the old-fashioned mysteries like Agatha Christie mysteries but this was the first kind of domestic thriller that had a twist I think like I'm, I'm there probably are ones before but this was became the, the most popular recently and it spun off a ton of copycats and but I just wish I could reread it because of all the shocks that I got from reading that. It was just, I just remember folding my clothes and then stopping and going, or, you know, cleaning up something and having to just like sit down and go, what? So I just, it was so fun to discover um, what was going on in this story the first time around. So, and, and it was such a unique book. The next book that I would like to reread or read for the first time would be Ring Shout. 
um, let me give you the description of this. A dark fantasy historical novella that gives a supernatural twist to the Ku Klux Klan's reign of terror. D.W. Griffith is a sorcerer and the birth of a nation is a spell that drew upon the darkest thoughts and wishes from the heart of America. Now rising in power and prominence, the Klan has a plot to unleash hell on earth. Luckily, Maurice Boudreaux has a magic sword and a head full of tails. When she's not running bootleg whiskey through Prohibition, Georgia, she's fighting monsters she calls Ku Kluxes. She's damn good at it, too. But to confront this ongoing evil, she must journey between worlds to face nightmares, made flesh, and her own demons. Together with a foul-mouthed sharpshooter and a Harlem Hellfighter, Maurice sets out to save a world from the hate that would consume it. This book was just so fun and so surprising and it packed so much in such a small book and I mean a magical sword going between worlds it this a, a, the weird idea that W.D. Griffith was not just the director of like this horrible movie but that he was a wizard and Ku Kluxes are like the Ku Klux Klan men become demons like they, their hate turned them into demons under the under the, the mask they become more and more inhuman and it's just like it's so cool it's so 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 cool and i loved it and i would love to experience it experience that for the first time i'm going to re-experience it i'm going to listen to it and read it again i bought the book because it's such a striking cover but <clears throat> i i just love this book so um i wanted i went ahead and ordered two more of pj jelly clark's books um they're about gins though um so i'm i'm very interested in those i think so the last two books that I wish I could reread for the first time are by a newer author to me named T. Kingfisher and it's The Twisted Ones and The Hollow Places and both of them have just reignited my love of horror. I loved horror stories obviously because you know when I, as a kid I would read Stephen King but I think I've read more horror stories this year than any other year partially because of these books and I've been looking for that experience again so in a sense I'm trying to relive and re read these books again by finding other books like them and I did find one like I said that ended up even getting a higher mark than these because these both got four stars and the family plot was one that matches the Twisted Ones storyline and also you know I've been picking up a bunch of middle grade horror stories and so it's just been spooky season all year for me and I'm living for it I love it and I have to say that probably the Twisted Ones is the beginning of that renaissance of loving horror stories for me so that is the end of the books that I wish I could read for the first time again what books do you wish that you could read again put them down in the comment box if you don't have any that you wish you could read again let's put a girl running emoji in the comment box for gone girl um, I think that's a funny way to end this uh, be easy on yourself and I'll see you in the next video